Welcome back to the Spring Game Showcase Live. Of course, I am Tim Geddes. I am repping Kinda Funny. We have Justin Woodward repping The Mix. The Mix. And we're joined right now by Josh repping Limited Run Games. Hello, everyone. This is really exciting. We're going to talk all about Limited Run Games. But first, I want to let you know that if you're liking what you are seeing for this stream, we're showing off 14 games over the next six hours. Thank you guys for supporting. But if you want to go above and beyond, you got to check out the QR code. You can go wishlist the games on Steam via the QR code that will be popping up on the screen right there. There it is on the front of the desk. So go check that out. Wishlist the games. It really helps the devs out and allows people to keep making cool games and you guys have more stuff to play but enough about that for now josh how you doing i'm good how are you i am doing fantastic i'm a big fan of limited run games big fan of your jacket we got the jacket squad Thank right you. here yes yeah, we've all got fantastic so jackets here can people <laughs> buy that jacket is that available so no this jacket is a one of a kind well wow. actually three of a kind okay three, three of them but you know it's 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 exclusive. Exclusive. I yeah. like that. I like that a lot. Very limited, limited it's run. a limited run. It is a limited Man, run limited. jacket. Yeah. Yes. For somehow, if people out there do not know what limited run games is, educate them, please. All right. Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. Right as I'm right as I'm taking a swig of water here. Uh, so limited run games. We're a direct to consumer physical game publisher. That's kind of our bread and butter. But we do a lot of other things as well. So to to get more into that, what we basically specialize in doing is taking games that are only available digitally and then releasing them in packaged forms for consoles so that people can collect and love and cherish these games that they played and enjoyed because you know digital ownership is kind of like you know it's a license you don't really own your digital products you can lose access to those at any time but if you really love a game and want to know that you can play it in 20 30 40 years you know, the only way to really know you can do that is to have it physical. So, you know, that's where we step in. We give people that choice of ownership. But recently, we've been getting a lot more into publishing original content, you know, bringing back retro games through our Carbon Engine technology, which is an emulation engine that we made in-house, or, you know, working with a lot of awesome indie developers to publish their games, or reviving classic games in remastered form. So, you know, we're really getting our toes into a lot of other areas and aspects in gaming now outside of just the physical releases i mean i think a cool aspect to that is like two examples being rugrats and pentiment right now both of them are mm -hmm. uh, available uh, for sale but pentiment being a game that is i mean it's a brand new like modern game that you would uh can only get digitally but because of you guys you can now actually get it physically yep. as well yep. but then rugrats uh being a, a brand new game retro styled and influenced but you can not only get it physically you can also get an nes cartridge physically yeah. right yeah and I, you know i worked with justin and his team on rugrats and that was an amazing experience because uh it, it was with a developer who i've known since 2001 this guy was a, a big animator on newgrounds you know old website old internet people will know mm -hmm. this site uh, he made a show called Eskimo Bob, and I was a big fan of it. And I knew he liked NES games and hacking them. And Justin was like, I'm looking for somebody to make NES games. So I put them in touch. That and, you know, yeah. that first game was Jane Saw and Bob Mall Brawl. Sick game. And then uh, he moved, went on to do Rugrats after that. Justin, you know, had this idea of doing a Rugrats game. And it cannot, I cannot stress how good the game is. It feels like, you know, a lost NES game from like the end of the lifespan when everybody knew how to use the console and everyone was awesome. making their best possible game. You gotta, it's you gotta amazing. shout it out. It's out. You know I mean, you can you can pre-order. Yeah, it right you can pre-order right now. <laughs> LimiteDRunGames.com on you know an actual NES cart, but also in modern formats for Switch, Xbox, PS4, PS5. So you know, pretty much anywhere you want to play it, you can. And then Real, with that, yeah, go for it, Justin. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, you, you're extremely passionate about like collect game collecting that kind of thing i think it was really you came into san francisco and one of the first things you did was yep. look for games can you talk a little bit about your yeah so you know it? anytime we travel for any event with limited run whether it's going to las vegas for the dice summit or san francisco for gdc the first thing we do is actually go around to retro game shops in the area so you know we visit every retro game store we can we you know, buy things for either the office library, which is, you know, my collection, which is with a fancy name on it. Um, <laughs> or, uh, or, or we just kind of look around just to see what kind of, you know, games are popular right now. It kind of helps keep me in the know. And you no, know, I, I just, I love game collecting. I always have. Uh, so it, for me, that's kind of the, the fun first thing to do for any conference is go to all these game stores. It's a good way to help me, you know, 
get in the right mindset for you know what lies ahead yeah man i, I love that and it, what i think is really cool is like obviously there's the the idea of the collecting of it all there's the preservation of it all but something like rugrats where it is a game that you can switch between modern graphics and the more retro style things it being like an authentic nes game uh, in one way yeah. right the emulation of it all you guys are talking about this uh, the carbon engine like you want to talk about that a little bit about like what that actually is and why it's yeah important. so with rugrats it's not one of our carbon engine games you know justin actually you know they've got that's where the asset swapping technology comes in you know they've got yeah, that over at the mix out, which yeah. is pretty incredible uh but at limited run we've developed this carbon engine technology and the whole point of that is to really reduce the barriers of publishers being able to re-release their old games. Sorry, I'm starting to just stutter because I'm trying to get over this fast. But, you know, there was this research report that came out from the Video Game History Foundation that 87% of video games are no longer available, no longer in print. And the main reason for that is it's really expensive to re-release old games. And most people don't want to bother with it. So we wanted to create technology that would tear the barriers down to doing that so that we could go to our partners like Konami and say, hey, you've got Rocket Knight Adventures. There's no way you're ever gonna spend the budget to re-release Rocket Knight Adventures. Can we do it for you? And you know, when we're going to them and saying, can we make this for you? Can we do it? It's such an easy discussion because then they're like, we don't have to put any investment in it. Yes. And that kind of tears those barriers down and starts making it easier to get these games back out. That's how we get Gex, right? That's how like, you get Gex. Gex. Is back. Like, Gex what, is what back, other everybody. Examples of games that are using the uh, the carbon engine. Uh, so we have done a couple. So we did the original Shantae with Way Forward. Uh, Shantae was this Game Boy game that when it released, it was ignored. It was the end of the Game Boy Color life cycle. So it sold like 5,000 copies. Wow. And it had gone on to become legendarily valuable, like $500 for a cartridge. So we were like, this is the first game we'll re-release. So we did that in Carbon Engine. I didn't realize that was the first. Oh, yeah, that was the first one we awesome. did. And then after that, we did a, uh, we took a game that only came out in Japan called uh, Kunio Kun. It was one of the Kunio Kun games, River City uh, Ransom. Uh, and it was the debut of the two girls from River City Girls. They showed up in that Super Famicom game, never came to the US. So we translated it and then brought it to the US for the first time through Carbon Engine. Uh, after that, we did Jurassic Park. So we did the awesome. Jurassic Park Classic Games Collection. And with that one, it was pretty tough because we had to go to all the various parties that had made Jurassic Park games, Sega, Ocean. And then we had to go to Universal to get the license and then connect all these dots together to re-release this game, which is uh, kind of a Herculean task. Nobody thinks about this, but like, you got to get Steven Spielberg to approve all this stuff. And wow. just think about like, you know, Steven Spielberg then versus now, you know, these games are so not representative of actual Jurassic Park, <laughs> yeah. right? Like one of the Sega games, Grant rides on the back of a Velociraptor. It's like, you know, so it's like you got to convince the IP holders that like there's a reason to bring these games back. And thankfully we were able to do it. And those like Sega Jurassic Park games were so influential to a lot of people. Like yeah. they sold tens of millions of copies. So getting to re-release that was this huge thing for me and i think a lot of people who were fans of those games uh and we've recently announced that we're bringing gex back you awesome. know like gex trilogy very happy uh gex was huge in the ps1 day so it's kind of crazy to think like how has gex not come back yet like 20 million copies of that game sold on ps1 are you digging through the 3do stuff to, did, uh, yeah, did so you go straight to we we we, we went straight to ps1 because it's kind okay. of the uh <laughs> it's kind of the the like the main version of all three yeah. of those games yeah the n64 version of gex 64 has some like uh extra levels so you know we're gonna see what we can do to try to incorporate cool. extra content but uh we're also looking at the game boy games so there are two game boy gex games that we may include in the package um, but it, it struck me as odd that Gex never had to come yeah, back before yeah. this. How? How has Gex not come back? I, I don't know. So you talk uh, about Shantae, the, the Game Boy one, yeah. and uh, there's also Shantae Advance. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, with WayForward, we found out that there was a Shantae game that had never come out. It had gotten to about 50% completion, and it was just kind of sitting there for almost 20 years untouched. And I brought up to Matt, you know, maybe we should revisit this. And Matt is the creator of Shantae. And he was super excited about this idea of getting to go back to this thing that they wanted to make so much back in the early thousands and just never got to make. So we funded it, which it was actually really expensive to fund. Like it was not a small project to bring back. It's, it's you know, a full budget game 
being built for the Game Boy Advance, which is pretty so it was fifty percent done, and they had to like come yeah, they had to they had to go back to that old code base. So they're working off of the original code base that was started when the Game Boy Advance was still available at retailers. They went back to that, and they're building it with all the original tools and all of the original wow. software. Okay, so it's pretty crazy to think that is that, like, really we, crazy. We have literally revived this game from the dead. And then that's going to also be distributed yeah, digitally. So through, through Carbon Engine, we're going to bring that multi-platform to everywhere. Rad. PS5, yeah, that's sick. Switch, PC. Yeah, so we're, we're pretty excited to bring this back. So then in addition to that, there's the LRG digital publishing uh, efforts that you guys yeah. are doing where like that's a kind of like brand new games that like you're putting forward or even things like this. It, it, would this count the Shantae Advance? Yeah, I mean, the, what I like to do with our digital publishing stuff is I like to do the things that nobody else will. So, you know, if WayForward had gone to any other publisher and said, hey, can you give us uh, a seven-figure budget to bring back a Game Boy Advance game? They would say, no, you're crazy. Go away. We would never do this. But I am crazy enough and stupid <laughs> enough, maybe, <laughs> where I'm like, yes, I want to do that because we want to do the things that nobody else would dare to do. So among that, we remastered the worst game of all time, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Uh -huh. Uh, because that just felt like something nobody else would ever dare to do. What, what it, can you talk a little bit about that game? Because I think a yeah. lot of people, it, I've heard of it, I don't know what yeah, it is. I mean, so yeah, it's did. an interactive uh, PowerPoint presentation, basically, <laughs> that was sold as a romantic comedy. Awesome. Uh, it was for the 3DO. And on the 3DO, as opposed to Nintendo platforms, uh, nobody was checking the quality of the content. You know, as long as you paid your three dollar licensing fee you could put the 3do logo on your game so like in a sense it legitimized any game that was coming out on the platform and things that were this bad were able to come out on the 3do you said and three dollars is that real it was like it was like three dollars for your licensing fee <laughs> oh, versus wow. nintendo where it was like you know yeah. Not only were they checking your quality, you were also giving them like 15, 20 bucks or whatever. It was like crazy. Yeah. It was like, kinds of great. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. So the barrier to get on 3DO was so low that like anybody could release something, which is what resulted in this game. And our release of Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, you know, we didn't just say, let's re release this game and, you know, spruce up the images or whatever. We produced uh, three hours of documentary content to put around it That's to kind cool. of contextualize it because. You know, it didn't feel right just re-releasing the worst game of all time. Like uh -huh. that just felt like a really <laughs> dumb thing to do. It's like, we, we have to explain why we're doing it. And that's what the documentary content does. And we put in this like Mortal Kombat crypt style mode where you, you know, it looks like an old screensaver from Windows 95 called Plumb the Depths. And that's where you unlock all the bonus content. So you play through the game, you get plumber bucks, which allow you to unlock the extra content. So you're taking some of the worst games ever made, trying to add some context to make them them good or, yeah. or, or have value now. Which, yeah, and, and what's what's great about that is we got our first numbered review for Plumbers Don't Wear Ties last week, and it was a 7.5 out of 10. Awesome. Which is great when you consider PC Gamer gave it a 3 out of 100. You know, that was the original <laughs> review score. That's, yeah. That is incredible. So that another infamous game series uh, for people are the, the Zelda CDI games. Yes. And y'all yeah. are doing something really, really cool with this game called Arzette. Want to talk about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Arzette and the Jewel of Faramore, it's out on Steam, Switch, uh, Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, it is basically the prompt for this game is, what if the Zelda CDI games were actually good? And it successfully pulled that off. So if you look at the Steam reviews right now, you know, we're sitting at overwhelmingly positive. Awesome. 97% uh, of reviews are positive. Uh, it's been really well received and the people who've played it love it. Uh, it really, it's I think, successfully story. accomplished that thing. It looks like a <laughs> CDI game that was just lost. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the gameplay in it just like, turns it into this very satisfying Metroidvania. And if you just saw, we also referenced Hotel Mario a little bit. There's a mini game that is, wow, you know, Hotel Mario. So <laughs> it really digs deep into these uh, CDI <laughs> uh, heritage and love. So are you finding success with this? Like, are you finding that like the audience is, is willing to, obviously they want the physical games. Obviously there's the collector side of it that has been working for so many mm -hmm. years, but like, are you seeing people are latching onto this idea and like the, you're making these crazy decisions no one else will. Like are, are the results there for you? Yeah, so far they have. Uh, Plumbers was, you know, massively successful relative to what we actually put into it between, you know, what we ended up having to pay to get the rights to the game and then what we put into actually remastering it, it has, I think like 10 X to the investment. So, you know, that worked out, which was pretty incredible. 
Uh, and then RZ is also, you know, it's already recouped the development budget. It's already crossed well beyond that. So uh, the other thing with RZ is when we announced it, we got so much love, so much uh, excitement on social media. It was like, I think, 14 or 15,000 likes on that initial trailer when we posted it uh, back in the summer. Uh, so there's definitely demand for this. And I think right now with the kind of current state of the industry where everything is so saturated and there's so many games coming out, like you really have to do stuff that make people ask like, what the hell is this? Like, why does this exist? You've got to elicit a response like that. And if you don't have a really strong, unique selling point, I feel like it's just so much easier to get lost in the crowd. And you jumped in with this like night trap. You did a like, yeah, the, mm, yeah. rendition of night trap. Did How did you get started it with like the CDI, 3DO? Like the FMV kind yeah, of stuff? Kind yeah, of stuff. so uh, I mean, I've always been fascinated by it. I mean, I was there. I think we were all there when multimedia games were kind of the soup du jour or whatever. Like everyone was like, let's create these movies that you can interact with. And uh, there was just something interesting about that time period to me because people were doing weird stuff that they would never do now. Like Todd Rundgren made an interactive album that was like an infinite album for the for the CDI. And uh, nobody's doing that stuff anymore. I want to see Marky Mark and the Funky Yeah, Mark. make my video. <laughs> uh, Sega CD. I actually own the rights to that now. So like... <laughs> I, 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 if I can get guy. <laughs> if, if I can get Marky Mark on board for it, I can actually do Yo, it. It's just, he, just how do I get Marky Mark to say yes? Would there is there a world that exists that the Zelda CDI games have any chance of making a comeback, or is that just out of the realm of possibility? I mean, I feel like so. Seth, the developer of uh, RZ, he actually the first thing he ever did before he made RZ was he remastered both of those games, and he made them really good. They're really fun. His versions. Uh, so if there was ever an opportunity to do it, like the versions exist. And what I love about it is it's, it's a redemption arc. Everyone loves a redemption arc, right? Like to get to see those games and have them actually be good. I feel like there's just something really satisfying about that. Everyone, they're the, they're a, a punchline right now and they have a chance to like escape that. And I think that would be a really cool story if it could happen. Totally. I have a feeling that. That'd be dope. I have a feeling that Nintendo will never allow it, <laughs> but it would be amazing if it could because I think these games have redeemable qualities to them. The The animation is actually like, as weird as it is, it's so satisfying to watch because it's so alien so and weird. Random. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's great. It's got a charm to it that nothing else has. You got Scotty Pippins. Like, oh, yeah. There's some, Slam City with Scotty Pippins. Yeah. There's some good games there. You're right. <laughs> uh, so we are, we're low on time here, but uh, is there any final things? Like, what would you recommend people go check out at Limited Run Games? So we put up new pre-orders every single week at LimitedRunGames.com. I would recommend that uh, if you're not already following us on social media, do that because we announce a lot of really cool stuff all the time. Uh, sign up for our mailing list and just check limitedrungames.com every single week. See what we're offering up and pre-order the things you like because everything is available for four to six weeks and after that it's gone. So fantastic stuff, Josh. Thank you so much for hanging out Thank with you. us. Thank you for having me. Uh, we are gonna keep talking about a whole bunch of games. Remember, wish list everything you're seeing. Go support limited run games, pre-order some stuff. Rugrats looks awesome. You know, might as well do that. Pentiment's there. Great times for everybody involved. Um, but yeah. We will see Thanks, you bro. later.